if you don't mind, could I start with just asking you a few things about yourself? Because I, I, I know very little about you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. How, how old are you is my first question I was curious about. Uh, I'm, I'm a middle-aged man. I'm, uh, I'm, 30, uh, I'm 34. Okay, I'm 33. I, I'm middle-aged too. I try not to think about myself that way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah we, we have to at some point, you know, it's not, it's not going away. Yeah, do you ever like forget that you're old and you're, you're like still sometimes imagine yourself being like a uh, hip young, like 20 something, but then you, you literally forget and you, and you remember, <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah, actually, no, I'm, I'm not young yeah, and hip. Yeah. I'm not young and hip and handsome anymore. I'm like a middle-aged like loser. Yeah. Like, yeah, no one, yeah, yeah. Ex exactly that. And no, I mean, it, you, you, it's, it's, it's terrifying, you know, but I mean, we're all structurally young, right? Because, you know, we know we're not gonna, you know, we know, we know we're going to be tortured, you know, until we're old. So, you know, we have to stay young and, you know, uh -huh. and, and so what, tell us a little bit about your intellectual background, if you would, in a nutshell, what's your kind of trajectory? That, that, that's interesting. Intellectual background. All right. Where, where do I start? Um, I'm, I'm, I, w I would say uh, my for intellectually, I'm a, I'm a leftist. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the left, so that's what I studied, and you know that probably has to do with you know like being exposed to ideas via uh, university. Uh, you know that that just w w what it does to you, and uh, well, I mean, w w what have I been interested in? Like, I've, did you I've come been up? In, did you come up? What education system did you come up in? What? You, you know, uh, university, uh, a German university. Okay. Uh, um, then, uh, yeah, I spent some time in France, and uh, and I uh, did a did a postgraduate degree in in England. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, very uh, sort of, you know, traditional uh, un university and, and what I what I what I was interested in, what I was studying was, you know, sort of a mix of uh, political theory. And uh, I was I was very interested early on in uh, propaganda. Uh, mm. So, uh, yeah, I think that that sort of uh, that sort of de determines a way, you know, if you sort of understand that, you know, sort of the, the way messages are distorted uh if you're interested in that you know i think i think uh, things get quite interesting and uh, you know of course that was the the sort of time when i was at university that was uh two, two you know i started going to university in 2006 so that was i think that was probably the same year uh stuff like uh loose change came out right Remind our audience of what Loose Changes. Uh, loose Changes is one of the first uh, pieced together sort of conspiracy films on 9-11. That's right. Uh, Jet yeah. fuel can't melt steel beams. That's right. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think that's really interesting, right? So it, it, there was sort of the, the, the uh, you know, like, well, you know, part of when the internet becomes this sort of, uh, you know, like weird information machine, right? That goes into all different directions. And uh, yeah, you, you, so 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 I was there when I was in uni at university. I think it was much worse than it is now, from what I can see. And uh, I think that the reason for that is that that sort of you you have this outside pressure, right, on the university, you know, from from sort of internet intellectualism, you know. And I, I think that's that's uh, that's actually fantastic, you know. That's really that's really productive. So you you're sort of you know you're forcing these people to to engage with you, you know, for risk of, you know, being completely irre irrelevant. So, you know, I, I think that's quite interesting. And I, you know, that must have, you know, like, I'm, I'm just thinking about it now that that must do something to you intellectually, you know, of course, too, when you, you, you're you sort of at university, and it's still this rel relatively uh, traditional university. Also in Germany, you know, like, uh, it was at a time, you know, I mean, I, I guess 2006, seven, that was, you know, still, sort of high neoliberalism in Germany, there was a lot of criticism for American intervention in the Iraq war and stuff. So, uh, it was, it was, yeah, okay. so, so you, 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 you'd, you'd roughly, uh, yeah, you roughly get an idea, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm an intellectual, you know, like I'm really, I'm, I, I care about ideas and, you know, like I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I ever blended particularly well into university, but, uh, you know, like it's, it's also, I think if you don't, uh, you know, sometimes you don't understand that, uh, you know, ideas in society, you know, they must be negotiated and, you know, they're, they're, they're tied to other stuff, right? You know, like, I mean. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And what so, was your post-grad research on? 
Uh, postgrad research, uh, it was uh, 2010, I was re researching uh, cybernetics, cybernetics and democracy and, and, and sort of, yeah, you know, like Snowden before Snowden, essentially, because what you what you sort of get, especially if you look at it through the lens of this sort of, okay, what's, what's propaganda and so on, and you start looking into, you know, parapolitical actors of the internet, you get some interesting, uh, you get some interesting outcomes, and of course, uh, you know, all of that stuff was known before Snowden. You know, Snowden was the thing that that was, you know, incredibly important because it popularized it, right? But all of these, the the, the big whistleblowers, sort of, they're, they're all from before. You know, like Russ Tice and I don't Wayne Matson. Everybody wrote about this, so very similar to to what happened to Epstein. Now, sort of, there there are, you know, it it, it comes out sort of it's it's being. It's being cut up, and and then at a certain point it comes out uh, for a, for a larger audience, right? And 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 that's really interesting. I mean, we we really are like in a we must be living in a period of of sort of esoteric liberalism, right? Mm. Because sort yeah, of these, these esoteric ideas, they're sort of you know they they are available now, and you know you 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 can sort of you can selectively access them. It, right, or it's stuff. almost like it's almost like what used to be esoteric, what was formerly formerly only known by a small select few, is becoming public in a way that no one can really stop. And so, like yeah. these, you know, like if you look at the Epstein case, and then you look also at all of the connections that Epstein had to these respectable institutions, right? It's like that is just one tiny little example of what I think is is coming down the pike even more and more. It's like the all of the rotten, hidden nasty kind of bourgeois hypocrisies that are basically kind of saturating contemporary contemporary institutional culture, you know, for decades mm -hmm. is now going to become subjected to the spotlight of basically a wide variety of different kind of entrepreneurial internet types of alternatives that have a lot of incentives to air all of the dirty laundry that's been yeah, kind of like yeah, suppressed and, and hidden. And now it's like every, you know, everything is becoming unconcealed, you know, to use a Heideggerian term, it, it seems to me like I, feel, I really does kind of feel like uh, a lot of people took a lot of comfort in many things. They trusted that many things would never really leak out. And they, they could take this for granted because of the technological environment of even just a few years ago. And now it's like everything, everything will be revealed. It seems like rapid, yeah, yeah. You know, rapidly. And, 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 and it's, and it's really interesting because I mean, right. I, I remember I was really, you know, sort of critical of the internet and when the Arab spring come came out, you know, like I sort of knew, okay, that's a thing that's, you know, like, you know, that that's manipulated by state actors, of course, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a spontaneous uprising, you know, like it has all these economic background and then sort of it's mm -hmm. manipulated by the state department, you know, sitting there and, and, you know, like training people on how to do this. But I find it still amazing that, you know, in a place like Hong Kong, you know, stuff like that can happen even, you know, like most repressive sort of internet in the world and, and still, you know, like sort of, you know, these network effects, you know, like if you sort of keep things decentralized, it's extremely difficult to sort of control the flow of ideas. And I think that's been, that's been vastly underestimated. So I, I think that's, you know, it's really fascinating me that this stuff, you know, can even happen like that. I'm, I mean, maybe they're just uh, sort of, you know, training uh, urban warfare, you know, like, and sort of letting it happen a bit. I mean, I have no idea, you know, how this, but I don't, I don't, you know, I think there are, you know, things that, that can still happen. And yeah, you know, like this, it's, mm. it, it, it's, it, it's, it's like you said, you know, now everybody knows about these things like Epstein and so on. And, and it's a, that's like a crucial point in society, right? Because you, you, you know, you can't not, pre you can't pretend not to know about it anymore. You know, like either, either you, you go, if you go along, you go along with dictatorship essentially, right? Because that's, mm sort of de facto authoritarianism, you know, like if you have all these, okay, you know, like we're, we have like uh, um, blackmail rings, you know, like essentially, you know, controlling politics, you know, that's something that, you know, everybody knew, but, you know, like sort of now you can't, you can't ignore it anymore. And of course, you know, what you see is, yeah, people do, you know, they still, it's, it's the same with uh, sort of Snowden, you know, people still don't know actually what the, the 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 sort of fallout from that what that means you know that you that you can sort of you have these tools if you go into these revelations i mean it's it's absolutely terrifying and frightening right but mm. people they they don't they don't take that up into their you know theory output and i think that's what's happening a lot you know like you you pretend somehow we pretend like to to go on like 
you know, 20 or 30 years ago. And, you know, it's, mm. but I guess it makes, it makes perfect sense. Right. I mean, you know, I guess it's always been like that, you know, you, you sort of, you know, th these scandals come out and they, they, they come out for a, for a minority, you know, like the, uh, the, the nightmare was here all along. It was unevenly distributed. Right. You know, right. Right. The, yeah, that's right. So, I definitely think that's, that's the case typically. And I think you're seeing that right now quite badly with traditional kind of institutionalized figures such as academics who have a kind of, they have a foothold in a kind of ancient uh, kind of institutional structure, which has worked fairly well for some time. And, and it might even carry on for quite some time longer. But in fact, like the, the world, the whole world around them has changed rapidly. And there are actually all these other kind of opportunities and ways of doing things that um are there and th they're ripe for the taking but most academics are just um like several years behind in terms of their actual perception of like what types of uh possibilities and potentials exist for something like for instance conducting an intellectual life you know i think uh every passing year from now on i think more and more academics are going to kind of realize and jump ship and um yeah, the, the, the future is unevenly distributed, but it does converge toward a kind of equilibrium in which it's unescapable for, for everyone. I yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm, if I'm that, I, I don't know if that's optimistic or pessimistic, by the way, right? I mean, that's, that's not so obvious, right? Because in a way, mm -hmm. you know, these institutions, they carry their own weight, right? For and, sure. And, and sort of to, to, to do something like, like you're doing, you know, and then, you know, I've, I've been, I've been observing you sort of over the internet for a bit. And I, I think it's really interesting. I think it's very brave what you're doing. Like, I, and I, I, I seriously think, you know, like people, you know, if they don't give you credit for what you're doing, you know, that's, you know, that, that, that's sort of, uh, that's a bit delusional too, but, but, you know, like the, the question is of course, you know, like how sustainable is that sort of lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and you know that, okay, you're, you're already, you're very invested in that, you know, that, but you know, that, that takes a lot of energy to sort of be your own entrepreneur all the time, you know, like, and, and you'd probably love to be, you know, like, I mean, it'd be nice to have like this sort of idea of, uh, you know, academic, the way the sort of current range of professors still saw it, you know, that's a mm -hmm. nice thing, you know, you could actually do a lot of things, you know, you could, you know, and, and, and why not, you know, why not, why not pay people to, to do, you know, these things, you know, like, I mean, there's abundance in society, you know, I know it creates a lot of resentment among people, but, you know, theoretically something like this that could be done and there, there are still academics that are good, you know, just extremely few. <laughs> for sure. For sure. They're out there. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> they're out there. Um, tell, well, thank you for the kind words, by the way, I, I do appreciate that. I think people will um, continue to mostly hate on me while I'm in this early discovery period. Like while I'm figuring everything out, uh, people will, hate me because it's uncertain. And because I'm essentially, I think the reason why a lot of academics hate me is because I'm doing full steam ahead what a lot of them would like to do, frankly. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. But it is, look, but look, it is man, hard. I, I, yeah. I, I know I'm talking to academics too, and and it's quite interesting for me to see too, you know, because, you know, a lot, a lot of them, they're, they're very likable people, you know, and they, they sure. know what's going on, you know, like they can't mm -hmm. pretend they, they don't know what's going on, but they do. And, you know, like sort of, there there is this, deep ambiguity because you know i the, the, i've had people come to me and talk about oh yeah like uh, you know like uh, popular academics came to me and said oh yeah i, I read a jacobite as sort of my guilty pleasure mm -hmm. you know but uh, they, they never admit it but you know i think and 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 that's that's precisely where you have to have these like sort of institutions that are not you know they're, they're sort of you know like uh, you know, negotiating between two worlds. I mean, I think that's what what Jacobite is doing, right? Like they're they're sort of okay. Like you you're you you are in touch with you know like everything that's going on, but you sort of translate it and you you try to sort of uh, you also make it aesthetically appealing. Which I think you know that that's something interesting in itself. You know, and, like, and of course they also get you this like, oh, why don't you just say the thing? And no, that's not what it's about. You know, like you 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 have you have to you know, like make it uh, aesthetically interesting, make it appealing, you know, and also just learn, learn how to write again, right? Because that we've completely lost that as a society, you know, like, I mean, you, you, here the, in Melbourne, there was a, you know, there was a writer's festival, you know, yesterday. And it's, you know, I, I look at this stuff, you know, you just look at the faces and it looks like, you know, you're, you're in the, you know, cu cultural Paralympics, you know? It, right, right.
So it's, it's absolutely it's 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 terrible. And you know the, the the important thing is to sort of recreate culture, right? You recreate culture and you do it outside of culture. And I think that that's perhaps also the real meaning of this sort of patchwork stuff, right? Like it's not you do, you don't create a society outside. You you create a state within the state, right? And that's very Gramscian, right? Mm, right. Yeah. Or you know, I always think about it as you pursue the line of flight as far outside as you can tolerate really as far as, as far outside as you can handle as far outside as you can muster without going crazy or becoming schizophrenic and when you when you pursue that line of flight idiosyncratically and but honestly and you know in your own really weird personal unique way and you just do that you know full throttle um only up into the limit that you can you know survive or withstand then that is pretty much the that that's pretty much the rule of thumb and if you do that it has a weird way of transforming the institutions from which you are you are taking that line of flight so it's like instead of trying to reform an institution just shoot outward in creating like the biggest baddest weird uh monstrosity that you can um in a way that really reflects what you think is good and true and beautiful and if you just kind of do that as like insanely as possible without dying, then that is pretty much the most radical revolutionary thing you can do for transforming the 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 institutional kind of status quo uh, culture. I think that at least that's kind of always been my mo mental model of it. Yeah. Well. Well. I mean, you know, you. I, I think it. I think it depends. You know. I think there's different sort of. You know. Like. I mean. You. You. You're speaking of a monstrosity, right? And, and and in a way, you know, I think that's interesting. You know, like we we, we all have to become monsters a bit, right? I mean, you, I, I, it's, I, it's even like I, I I feel that you know, like because that's what society needs as well, right? I mean, you mm. you you have to become a sort of a monster, you know, like and 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 and, and violate certain rules, you know, like in order to to make it go, and also in order yeah. to to yourself, you know, be able to breathe and you know, like survive, because you know, like I. I don't want to live in a world, you know, where everybody's like, you know, like, you know, so, some some of these people they're so so terribly scared, you know. And it's like I, I sometimes I think, yeah, you know, just do a little bit, you know, like just do a little bit, go, you know, push it a little bit, and then you know, if everybody does that, you know, I mm -hmm. think it's actually going to be quite livable, you know. But you know, like if you go ahead, you know, like, and you know, like I mean, I've been sort of, you, you know. I don't know, like I used to work for Vice, for example, Vice magazine, you know, like, and, and it's, to me, it's, it's just astounding, you know, like you, you have these editor types, you know, just like their self-censorship is just so enormous, you know, it's not like, I don't, you know, like, I, I don't know if people understand that, you know, like there is these sort of, they, they, they live under constraints. They oh, live yeah. under constraints, no doubts. They have their thing, you know. Like, for, you know, I remember for Vice magazine, the the the, the editor told me, oh, you you know, like you, they could criticize Germany, but they weren't allowed to criticize Israel, for example, mm. you know. And mm. um, so there there are these constraints, but your your task as an editor, you know, like is to is to negotiate that. You need to negotiate, you know, like negotiate it as far as possible, you know, like mm. you know, cover for your writers, you know, like sort of like like find a way to sort of say things you know like you know, and and you know like and everybody has to do a bit the job you know like read in between the lines and so on i think most people already write like that the problem is that that audiences are not used to that stuff but that's right. always that's always been the case you know like people always write in between the lines they just think oh that just happens in the soviet union no nah. and, and it's gonna it's gonna happen increasingly and i think that's important too it's important to mm -hmm. learn again and so speaking of editors, let's talk a little bit about your interesting kind of publication history. Your first, the, the book about Berlin, the, the, the book you published with Zero about Berlin, was that your first book? Yeah, that's my first book, yeah. Right, okay, and what year was did that come out? Uh, I wrote that in uh, 2014. So, okay, great. So walk me through a little bit. How was your experience publishing with Zero Books? <laughs> Look, man, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know that we create. I created that this book with a friend. You know, who's a designer. It was supposed to be a sort of a coffee, you know subversive coffee table book. Mm. You know, we you know we had clear goals. We wanted you know like I don't know a thousand interesting people to read it. And uh, yeah, at some point we sent it to zero. You know, and you know for me zero was the place. You know, of Mark Fisher. You know, and and Gilad mm. Atzmon. You know, I, I thought all right. You know, like that. I you know I I'd only. Uh, 
you know, I'd, I'd only read those two books, but I, I still thought, oh, that, that would be, you know, like, that's great. That's a great name, sort of, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I, I sort of, I, I remember I liked their sort of, they have this disclaimer in the books, you know, zero books, you know, interesting discussions, not the traditional left and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, uh, you know, it turned out into this like complete nightmare, you know, like, I mean, it, it, zero like first of all they you know it's not a, that's not a professional thing you know like that's a that's a glorified you know like self-publishing platform essentially what okay, you well, do well, is hang you, on hang on walk us through this slowly because some people might have no idea what you're talking about i frankly don't know that much at all about the story so uh, for instance what you just said we'll, uh, unpack that a little bit okay zero books sort of the way you publish there is you send your text in and then it's being read by by the authors there or some of the people and you know like when i sent my text there it was it was relatively quickly read you know by four people and that was a that was a big thing sort of okay and i have no idea probably because i was writing about berlin you know and people were interested in berlin at the time <clears throat> and it was like sort of a, you know it's like a well, it's like an experimental sociology, you know, sort of frivolous theory book, you know, with subversive uh, footnotes. You know, that's what I tried to do. You know, there's like MK Ultra in there and so on. And, you know, 2014, not so many people were talking about it. Now that's become popular, but, or Ted Kaczynski and so on. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> Well, anyways, I mean, I, I, I got a contract offer from them and, you know, and, and, and I got published and, uh, yeah, why not? You know, like, I mean, sure. you know, they, 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 they don't do a lot for you, but you sort of, you're out there and they have their own retailers and sort of, you know, like, I think I got the book got reviewed by two people or something, which is better than self-publishing, right? Especially because I was not on the internet or anything, you know, mm. so. Um, so is that what you meant by kind of glorified self-publishing? Is that they don't yeah, really... it's, 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 yeah, it's you know they they have a very uh, sort of small structure. You know, it's a well, as you can imagine, you know, they're selling theory books, so they're not a big company, but mm -hmm. they have these sort of different lines of where people can sort of yeah, they they self-publish, and I I suppose they make sure that they have they have, they have a bit of talent, and then they sort of bring it out under that brand, which is still you know like. You know, I mean, that's that's been completely diluted, sort of zero books. They, they, they used to be a bigger name than they are now. I mean, now they've sort of become the joke of the internet, right? Well, okay, we'll, we'll talk more about this, but um, walk us through. So the you published the book and it was fine. You said, you know, got a couple reviews that's better than self-publishing, or, yeah, yeah. or at least it's better than what you would have got for yourself self-publishing at that time. Um, and then, so it, all, all in all, so far, nothing sounds too uh, difficult or problematic. So, so what happened? Like, what what happened from there? Oh, you you, you mean yeah, yeah. I I got uh, yeah. Uh, well, at some point, I I started uh, I started writing for 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 Jacobite, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that th that's what you're getting at, right? Well, all I all I know basically is that you started writing for Jack White, and then there was some beef. With, there was some beef with Doug Lane, the Zero Books guy, and uh, I just wanted to kind of know the whole story, and and also, yeah, yeah. you know, not yeah. just for not just for the sake of gossip, but for the sake of uh, something you might know. I'm very interested in is precisely this rapidly changing economy around publishing and the trade offs between traditional publishing and just going it alone on the internet. It seems like the power of balance is changing rapidly and dramatically. And clearly, I'm I'm I've decided to uh, put a lot of my effort into getting out in front of that, and so that's the larger kind of substantive uh, interest motivating this. I'm not just like an internet gossip person or anything like that, but for the moment, um, humor humor me with a little bit of gossip and just tell me like the basic interpersonal <laughs> story here of what happened with Jacobite and you and Doug Lane, and then your kind of you did like a kind of uh, a, a clapback. <laughs> you did like a podcast, kind of like uh, you, you dropped some sort of like podcast that was. Uh, basically kind of saying that he he like selectively edited edited things out of you in a malicious way so just if you would just take your time yeah, and tell, okay, tell, okay, tell okay, us this okay. whole story so, if, if you would so well for, for for the listeners duck duck and yeah, like a duck duck lane is this uh, is a you know like this the zero books podcaster and uh well i suppose the, the the sort of zero books is is in part built on his on his podcast and on his audience sort of he's holding is this he like together. a part owner or something 
Yeah, he, uh, he, he must he, mu he must be. I mean, uh, he, yeah, he, I think so. I thought that, so. that being said, you know, like that's probably, you know, one of the few full time jobs there, you know, like, the, 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 as right. I said, you know, that's a that's a very lean structure, sort of the whole, you know, it's called John Hunt publishing that that mm -hmm. whole structure. So zero books is one of their brands. And um, well, I, I wrote this uh, this uh, um, uh, essay for for Jacobite that's called "Ending the Long Twentieth Century," and uh, you know that, that I think that's one of my one of my better essays, and it sort of it got popular with a with a uh, you know a couple of anarchists, and uh, so they I must have talked to Doug Lane about it, and and Doug Lane you know somewhere said, "Oh yeah, he, he won't be you know like somewhere on online he wrote he won't be publishing with us anymore." Just mm -hmm. like that, you know. So because he's writing for Jacobite, he won't be publishing for us anymore. How, and, uh, however, will you get on, Nicholas? Huh? <laughs> however, how, however, will you write again? Yeah, and I have, I have no idea. You know, I'm, I, I, I was devastated, of course. You know, like depression, alcoholism, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, drugs. Um, but you were know, you upset by it? I mean, you could uh, it's it, you could argue that that's kind of inappropriate for a, for a publisher to to say that about an author. How did you feel about it? uh look i i i don't really i i think uh, you know he's he's been he's been treating me a bit condescendingly and I, I don't usually you know i don't assume these things so i i and i don't really care you know like to me like i, I kind of you know like i i don't want beef with people you know like I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to sort of provoke people like and especially you know i you I, I look at the guy and i think you know it looks like a you know like like you know sort of a small town librarian with erectile dysfunction <laughs> you know and and I so I, I I I feel a bit sorry for him. So I, I don't want beef with anyone like this, you know. So <laughs> why would I? Well, but he sort of he he laid it on me, and so sort of somebody said, okay, uh, you know, some he wrote this about you. So I called him out on Twitter, and then he challenged me to to come on his podcast, you know, like oh okay. come on the podcast, you know. And so I went there and I thought, oh, yeah, it didn't it, it didn't go badly or anything. And I thought I thought, you know, like, oh, we agreed on a, a lot of stuff. And, you know, I thought, oh, you're actually all right. You know, I actually, you know, I, I even kind of like this guy, I even still kind of like this. And guy. was the purpose of the podcast to kind of clarify your writing for Jacobite? And, and yeah, that, that, that was that, you know, because he said, oh, I'm a reactionary and so on. You know, I had all these defenses. You know, I basically the, the, it could have been an interesting sort of argument because I said, you know, like, OK, the economy is uh, overdetermined geopolitically, mm. right? And and I, I I was arguing for that, and he was arguing against that, and sort of no, it's all about productive power and so on. And I said, yeah, okay, but you know, like Russia is not, you know, Russia is not a productive power. You know, mm. Russia, Russia is a geopolitical power, and they're a technological power. You know, but. Uh, you know, so the, the the and at the time it was quite interesting because Russia and perhaps still Russia is the big problem in the world, right? Not China. You know, it's in, it, perhaps that's shifting right now, but it used to be like that. And the, the the question is, of course, why that is. You know, it's a really interesting question. Anyways, yeah. So we um and you know I thought it went quite well, and then you know he brought he brought out this you know his the podcast from his side with this condescending title, you know, like. Like uh, uh, you know, socialists aren't reactionaries or something like that. Okay. And 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 what he did is that he you know he I think he you know he cut out every time I laughed, and he sort of took out the big part of the interview where we agreed on everything. Really. You know, and he sort of yeah, and and and, and I thought oh that's just incredible you know, and he you know like really brought it out you know like this, okay, you know, it's fascinating. That is fascinating actually because. So, yeah, I thought, I thought it's really interesting, and you know, like I, I can sort of understand it. You know, like th this guy, I think he lives in Portland, right? Mm. And in Portland is the big hub of you know, like Antifa, Antifa people, and so on. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you know, like he, he has he has kids, you know, like so, you know, sure. like I, I could I could even you know, like say, all right, you know, like fair enough, you know, this guy's probably scared, you know, like he doesn't want to piss off you know, the wrong people and have mm. like bricks through his window or something, you know, for being a fascist. So whatever but sure. and you know like you know in a way I, I can sort of understand that but you know like th there's better ways to do that you know like i thought i thought it was really you know shoddy and uh, you know like so the, how the, to reason just, I, like, the reason i find that very fascinating is because it links up with something else i've noticed about zero books which is it's kind of interesting how zero books is a book publisher or at least it was a book publisher <laughs> to some degree and <laughs> 
now it's becoming more and more like Doug Lane's content creation program. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And that's very interesting if you think about it. It actually makes a lot of sense and hats off to Doug Lane for being able to do that kind of pivot. Like a lot of people who kind of mm. occupy a traditional perch in um, a traditional type of company, such as a book publishing company, have a really hard time making that pivot. So kudos to, to Doug Lane for, for doing quite well with it. Like I, you know, I don't, I'm not like, I don't watch his YouTube channel, but I see it around. It gets like recommended to me a lot. And, uh, you know, he's, he's putting out content and he, the channel, the YouTube channel is growing. And I think he has a pretty, uh, uh, a pretty good Patreon, a Patreon that's doing quite well. And anyway, it's just interesting because, oh, is my camera about to die? Oh, uh, so people can hear me, but, uh, Ben is, changing battery. Sorry, I forgot my battery is about to die. So yeah, what's interesting about it is that uh, as book publishing becomes uh, a more and more difficult industry, and as the industry seems to be kind of on the decline, then it, it looks like Doug is kind of like, re you know, reallocating his effort towards the online content creation game. But what's fascinating about that to me is that the incentives are not totally aligned. And I think that's kind of what's going on here. It's, it sounds like, because if you're a publisher, then you're invested in your authors, right? If, if you want to go to bat for your authors and you want to really kind of represent them. And if people are talking shit about them, you might be inclined to defend them or to stand by them and to, and to, and to, to hold strong, to support your authors and your whole back catalog. But if the book publishing industry is going down the tubes and you, as a, as a publisher kind of know that and kind of feel that, and so you're putting, <laughs> you're, and you're putting more of your effort into making YouTube videos for money on Patreon. Then what's interesting there is you actually start to get torn apart a, as a person and as a, as a kind of corporate entity, because if people on the internet are talking shit about Nicholas Hausdorff, one of your, uh, uh, authors, well, do you evaluate that from the standpoint of the publisher who has an interest in this author and would, should want to defend him? Or do you think about that as, I'm actually making most of my money more and more from Patreon and making like social justice warrior videos for like a kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of like silly left wing mass of, of, of silly people. So that's what, that's what I think is kind of interesting. Like if he did a podcast with you, for instance, is that podcast is the purpose of that podcast to help an author of his publishing company clarify himself and present himself more fully and truly to kind of counteract the the rumors and the, the gossip and the malicious um you know uh chatter about him in the media that might be your guess like the, going into the podcast you probably assumed that was the purpose of the podcast to kind of give you a platform to clarify and yeah, yeah. and to kind of feed into the greater glory of of the zero books imprint that you're a part look, of look, look like, i mean I, yeah. what you're what you're saying makes absolute sense and I, I even you know i think i think i'd like him more if, if that was the case you know, I think that would actually be cool, you know, if he's like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm going rogue, you know, like I don't give a shit, you know, <clears throat> right. well, what I, don't, I'm I don't I don't think that's the case. I think he was intimidated, you know, just ideologically, you know. Right, right. But the other <laughs> the other the other face of intimidation is the positive attraction and the positive incentives for playing that game. So like what I'm getting at is when he's recording this zero books podcast with you, one might assume that the, the he wants those podcasts to kind of uh, convey the most positive image he can about the authors of zero books, but actually more and more, what he's probably what what he's probably facing is the kind of uh, market pressures that he that he is in fact facing, which are telling him actually this guy Nicholas on the podcast. If I can slice this up to make him sound reactionary, that's actually good for me as a content creator, even if it's bad for me as the face of zero books. And that's, that mm. I think is very, very interesting. Like I want my audience to kind of figure out how to read between the lines here to see that under these weird uh, social battles on the internet in, in arcane worlds, such as like radical left, like publishing worlds, under, under the surface of these disputes and weird beefs that people have are usually complex and uh, quite fascinating changes in like the underlying distribution of power where people's incentives are shifting and people um, you know, people, people are speaking and acting in a way that reflects their, their changing incentives. And it sounds like this is a really good, uh, example of that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that sort of the market incentive would have been to go, you know, against me on this case, in this case, you know, I but think his, he lost but the people, his patrons, I would bet you that his patrons on Patreon 
are w like prefer that angle. Like they'll they'll he's going to make more money via the Patreon path if he throws you under the bus than if he defends you. Do you see what I'm saying, or do you disagree with that? No, oh, yeah, that, that that that's interesting. I mean, and I haven't thought about that, but I mean, as you said, I mean, I think you 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 opened up a very interesting distinction, which is you know sort of is he's not a acting as a sort of zero books guy anymore, but he's acting more as his own sort of venture. And uh, but he's kind yeah. of using he's using the zero books imprint to kind of as an actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. F fair enough. And you know, like I mean, it's it's really it's a really interesting question. I mean, you, yeah. then you can also say like, how is patron used by sort of, you know, like you know who are who are these patrons sort of you know like if you're a if you're a left guy and sort of you're a bit popular, you know, why is like a place like Chapo Trap House? Or, you know that why do they get so much money? You know, like who are these people? You know, supporting them, you know, like, and who are these shady interests behind that, you know, who sort of, you know, support you via this, like, oh, yeah, crowdfunding, you know, like, sort of the way you, you, you sort of, the same way you would launder, like, political donations, you know, maybe, maybe something like that is happening too, you know, I think that that's, that's interesting to, to, to think about. But uh, I mean, yeah, of course, that, that's, that's actually, you know, like, maybe this is completely, yeah, maybe it's a completely unconscious thing. And just, you just go along with your, you know, what, what do my patrons want? But, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's an interesting angle to think about. I think I think you're you know I think you're right. Yeah. So when that podcast came out, you were like, uh, presumably kind of shocked by that and upset by that. So what did you do? You posted like a full unedited version, did you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I counter recorded it. Like I I, I sort right. of knew that that you saw that, this coming. That, yeah, I saw I saw it coming. I had a feeling about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, he's just, I, I think he's a, you know, he's a, he's a shady guy, you know, in a way, you know, mm. and if, if he was just openly shady, you know, like I, I'd like him more for that, you know, but, you know, it's only, it's only just this moment occurring to me that I honestly forgot about this and didn't think about it as having any effect, but in the interest of full disclosure, I should probably tell people that I did once submit a book to zero books, a proposal, mm. and it was rejected. So I, I literally forgot about it for this conversation, but it just occurred to me since I'm kind of talking a little bit of shit, people deserve to know that I did once send a proposal and it was rejected. Uh, I'm not sour about it though, I assure you. Uh, but in the interest of full disclosure, I guess one could argue that, you know, I have to disclose these things. Other than that, oh, actually I did the Zero Books podcast once myself. And-, um, and oh, I, I, what, what, was your, uh, what was your experience with that? I thought it was fine. Just like you said, I thought he, he was perfectly uh, easygoing guy I, and had a fine time talking with him. He seemed like kind of smart and interesting. And well, I had I had, a f I had fun talking with him, basically. And uh, it was about Black Block. And this was when like Antifa was getting really in the news uh, in this current wave a few years ago with like Milo Yiannopoulos when, when Antifa went like mainstream as a as a public kind of talking point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. A, I did a conversation with Doug about about that. And it was perfectly fine. No problems. Um, that's my only that's my only connection to him and, and zero books. Otherwise, otherwise, I'd, I have no horse in the race. And uh, I'm obviously now like fully invested in kind of just doing my own thing anyway. So it's it's all good. But the reason I, I learned about you, Nicholas, was through Angela Nagel. Mm -hmm. And Angela, not to gossip even more, but a little bit, um, you know, she she told me that basically, I, I, I should be delicate here. I don't want to I don't want to like air her dirty laundry. And also, I'm <laughs> I forget what was, I forget what she said was private or not. I think I think I can say just very generically, uh, she said that I think this is public information. I think she she said that when she wrote her article on open borders, uh, the mm -hmm. left case against open borders, you know, she got a lot of public backlash for that, and mm, yeah. and she said that at one point I forget the details, but she she told me that at one point, uh, Doug Lane. I, basically disavowed her publicly on some forum somewhere. I forget exactly. I forget exactly <laughs> the detail. And, uh, and, she, no and, she, and she was pissed. You know, she thought that was, a, I think, no, 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 so. No, she no, thought no. that was very inappropriate, especially, yeah, especially in her case, it's a little bit different, I think, because precisely because Kill All Normies did so well for them. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, that, that was their main yeah. book, man. Like th that, that went right. really well. Right. And, and oh, that, that, that's even more interesting, you know, like in, in, in light of what you say, you know, like sort of divided loyalties between publisher and, and himself, you know, it, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you, you, you see like, and, and, and to be honest, you know, because, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, when I when I had this beef with him, of course, you know, like I'm not, I'm not a psychopath, so I'm like I'm trying to find fault in myself, you know, like I, 
yeah. you know, I ask around, you know, like what, what do other people think of Doug Lane? He has a really bad reputation. He has a bad rep, you know, oh, he really? has a bad rep with his riders. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot more people who have beef with him. I feel like now I'm going to have to invite him on the show, which I'm happy to do because I, yeah, I, like do I, it. I mean, of I, course, I, I honestly it. didn't, I honestly didn't expect this to be, to become like, we're talking about him for like 15 whole minutes at a time. So now I feel like I'm going to have to give him an opportunity to respond. Yeah, and it, it, look, it's it's, it's, it's going to be good for his show. Right. I mean, you, you give him some attention, you know, <laughs> in, unless, unless, I mean, in, in his worldview, I don't, I don't know his politics well enough. He might consider me beyond the pale. I don't know. Some people do. I don't know why, yeah, but yeah, if I, uh, if, uh, you know, like, I mean, I have no idea, but I, you know, I think, you know, it's just, look at you know like i think it's an interesting thing for zero to you know like well, what does zero do i think they should take a stand right mm. i want them to say you know like do you want to continue selling kill all normies you know like and superstructural berlin you know like and of course they, they're gonna they're not they don't give a shit about superstructural berlin but i don't i think you know probably they shouldn't sell it anymore you know like if they disavow me you know like right put your money where your mouth is yeah, yeah and, and and if they disavow angela nagel you know like they should just stop selling their books you know like i think that when wouldn't that be a really like, you know, like, or, you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know, like or, Doug Lane has to go, you know, like it's either or, you know, like we, because you can't, and you, you can't do both things, right? Yeah. You either have to, and you know, like as an editor, your job is to sort of, you stand by, you stand by your writers, right? right. You know, that's right. your team, man. You're their coach, you know, like you have to sort of, you bring them out. I mean, that's what I would do, you know, like, that's what I would expect, you know, people to right to, right to think you know like you sort of you stand by them and you know you you you, you know like unle unless they like seriously fuck with you you know like you right or i mean look even if you lack courage to do that at the very least what what anyone can do is just remain silent at least you don't have to positively disavow oh he won't be writing for, <laughs> yeah, exactly. he won't be writing for zero books anymore or, oh that angela <laughs> nagel she's not gonna be writing for zero yeah. books. like you don't need but, to go but, and but, say those things unless yeah. you're a content creator making content for like indignant resentful lefties and if that's your new brand well then guess what you actually do have to say those things because that's yeah, your, no. that's your yeah, bread yeah, and butter yeah, yeah. You do, you, you, you do it exactly. And you, you, you take the disclaimer out of the zero books, you know, oh, we're like edgy, you know, like you just say, yeah, we want to, you know, like we want to be gentle to people or something, you know, and, and, and have a gentle discussion about socialism or something like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to get on the agenda real quick before we move on, because we shouldn't be talking about um, a small, random, radical left, like publishing imprint for more than uh, 20 minutes at a time. But uh, just to put a bow on it and put this behind us. Uh, it is kind of interesting, my experience with it, because when I when I submitted a book proposal to them, it made it through like a few rounds or however it works. And then it was it was basically they said no at the very last at the very last part of the process. And that's fine. I mean, it's perfectly fine. It was mm -hmm. it was a very um, Deleuzean book. And if I remember correctly, in fact, not to call out Doug Lane, but I, if I remember correctly, uh, he was the one who said no to it, actually. And uh, it had the support of other of other editors. And I, if I recall correctly, he said something to the effect of this is too Deleuzean for me. I don't want it, uh, which is fair enough. Like, that's perfectly that that's perfectly normal. That's editorial preferences. No, no big deal. No problem. But what's interesting was um, when after it, after it was rejected, you know, I was like, kind of my pride was hurt for like a, a couple of days because I was like, what the fuck? I thought zero books publishes anything nowadays. <laughs> like, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> like, I honestly thought that I was submitting, like, not to be, not to sound cocky or anything, but I mean, I, mean, I was a professor at the time. I was like, you know, uh, doing very well. I mean, I've like published peer review journal articles. And when, like, when was that? Uh, what, what year was yeah. that? Um, I, I set, that was probably two or three years ago about. And, um, okay. yeah, so like, you know, I was fine. Like I was succeeding very well in kind of my <laughs> academic and intellectual life. So I kind of, I honestly was seeing it as, um, I wanted to give a gift to like a small radical left publisher. Uh, I kind of, I honestly thought I was like that nowadays zero books seems to publish anything. Surely they'll take it. And I thought I was doing like a good deed. I was being a good citizen of the radical left because I'm like a fancy professor and I publish in like elite journals <laughs> with like peer reviewed journal articles. Uh, so I was, I honestly had it in my head that I was like, oh, I'll give this to zero books as my first book because I want to give my first book to like a good, you know, a, a well-known, you know, in the radical left scene, a, a publisher mm -hmm. that's well-known in the radical left scene. Um, so to me, the debate was like, should I try to sell this to a bigger press or should I just give it to a radical left 
imprint. And so that was my stupid thinking was like, they'll publish anything. Surely, of course, they'll take it. And here's here's my gift to the radical left, like publishing world. Of course. So of course, when they rejected it, I was, uh, you know, kind of butthurt for at least a few days. But then looking back on it, what's kind of interesting about the story and one of the reasons why I think it's worth telling, I'm not just like wasting people's time with my weird personal background experiences. It's that in all honesty, I think it's now undeniable pretty much that the data is is pretty much undeniable that if I self publish that book right now, the book that I proposed to them a couple of years ago, which is pretty much already written, it's just, I just have to, I just have to finish it and do something with it. If I, if, and when I self publish it, if I choose to do that, I will almost certainly now, after all this time, I will sell m more copies of that book and make more money and more people will read it. If I self publish it now, than had it been accepted by zero books two years ago. And that's a pretty profound statement. That's a pretty profound fact. And, and I'm pretty sure the data I'm the data that I'm aware of, both on my end on on you know, zero's end, the, the publishing world's end, I'm pretty sure the data makes this a kind of indubitable uh, statement. And so that's really, really interesting. And I think it's also really important for young people because a lot of young people, you know, whether they be undergrads or grad students or whatever, who want to, you know, they they have interesting ideas, they want to do theory, they want to write a book, you know, they look up to places like zero books. And they're like, they're aspiring to, oh, sometime soon, maybe I can have a zero, I can have a book with zero books. And they they want that and they get they get hyped for that. And then, um, you know, if zero books rejects them, they're like gutted, and they feel like they have no other options or whatever. But like, I'm here to say like, no, actually, they're like a small, pr a small press such as zero books, even the bigger ones like Verso, these presses are way smaller than most people imagine, like the, the number of actual books that they will sell for you is way smaller than you might think it is, unless you're one of the few kind of superstars, like someone like Zizek or whatever. Um, and that's how they make most of their money is this really small number of super star successful cases for the average person like these institutions, especially in, in the publishing world that people look up to and feel like they need their stamp of approval to be able to write their book or to get their word out there. Um, they really don't have that much to offer you. And in fact, if you just went, if you just went independent, but you worked really hard and you hustled and you were, you were courageous and you basically just wrote what you wanted full time for like a couple of years, you will soon, like sooner than you think have, um, more selling power than you would have as an average author at one of these small presses. A lot of people don't realize that it's a pretty like ground, ground, um, groundbreaking or earth shattering realization when you, when, when you really realize that, I think for, especially for a lot of young people. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think you, you, you have to understand that sort of, you know, that's a, yeah, as you said, you know, it's a mark of approval, you know, and it's a sort of, okay, you, you, you know, like it means, okay, you're sort of accepted by the mainstream. Right. And, and the weird thing is that these, even like, a, a, you know, what zero used to be, you used to be quite a, you know, radical left publisher that, that, that is mainstream now almost. Mm. Right. Um, you know, like, you, you know, you see old people reading, you know, kill all normies, you know, that's, that's, that's definitely what, what's happening. And, um, but, you know, like, I, you, what you say is true, of course, but you know, that means, of course, you know, all right, you know, like, the, you, if you want to be a writer, you need an in internet presence and so on, you know, I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe that's just not everybody's thing, you know. Right. But it, the thing is, it, it doesn't have to be much of a thing other than writing itself. So it's like, if you're just writing, like instead of writing in private where you're like doing a big book proposal and then you're trying to get an agent and then you're trying to sell the book, yeah, yeah, um, just yeah. everything, yeah. every part of that process, every piece that you write day after day, if you're just blogging it and then YouTubing it and tweeting and all this sort of stuff. And it doesn't require a lot of work. Like most of this stuff can be automated. A lot of people don't realize that you don't have to be some kind of like internet whiz or you don't even really have to care about having any kind of public persona. If you're just simply doing the work and it's interesting work and you're, and you're doing it with discipline over time and you're simply putting it out there. Um, like the, the power of that in terms of publishing, but not even in terms of the number of people that you'll reach also, even in terms of, of, influence and status like this is the really weird thing that people don't understand is that if you ask teenagers right now like what they want to be when they grow up one of the most popular responses is a youtuber so it's like getting zero books or verso or whatever to publish your book it actually does not have that much of an effect as even the main thing it's supposed to be which is the stamp of approval like that stamp of approval that status boost that you get from that insignia or that imprint is itself 
the, decreasing yeah. over, over time. The power of that is decreasing over time for the simple reason that our culture through digital platforms is dramatically fracturing. So everything is super subcultural now. Like people don't care as much nowadays about like what the fancy name on something is. What they care about is, does this suit my unique ideological and personality profile? Is this the type of content that I enjoy? And um, so, yeah, like you said, zero books is becoming mainstream, but I would even take issue with that because what's actually happening is they've to, 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 to survive in terms of the market pressures they're facing, they've had to kind of expand and dilute, but that doesn't mean that they've gone more mainstream. They're, they're still extremely niche. I mean, extremely like it's not, um, to think of it as mainstream is definitely, again, it's like imputing to these institutions, a type of power that maybe once upon a time they kind of had, but that is increasingly like slipping away from them. And that's why people like Doug Lane are spending so much of their effort doing content creation instead of, instead of writing books, like the, the message is right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Instead of writing or publishing books. Um, like if you, if you read between the lines there, you can kind of see behind the scenes, like where you should be ded dedicating your effort. Don't dedicate your effort to making a proposal for some small press that doesn't even get you that many more readers. Put that time and energy into actually making content and getting it out there full time. And um, your your chances of success are both higher and also more immediate, I think. Limited success, obviously. I'm not saying people are gonna like instantly become kind of some kind of superstar. Yeah, but, like, like, like look, let, let, let me drop in something there. Like I think, yeah. first of all, uh, you know, like don't, don't expect to to get paid for writing mm -hmm. you know I, th I think t you know to be honest like i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to advise people on doing sure. that like don't you know because y y if you want to do that you you're going to be dependent on people paying you for political opinion so you're going to come under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. you know and, and you know and 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 you know i think you know to be honest i mean what you what you're doing is you know like that that's that's brave but i think you know like th there's also limits to what you can do and i think you know like as soon as you reach a certain point you know like in terms of audience and as soon as you start you know like asking you know questions that are that are you know unpleasant you're gonna you're gonna get under a lot of pressure and i think that's what's happening to a lot of people so they sure. i think they, they 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 should you know like people should know that you know like it's you know if you write, you know, do it sort of out of abundance, you know, like writing is my hobby. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I take it very seriously, you know, as a hobby, mm -hmm. but it is my hobby. You know, I don't make any money of that. You know, that's like, a really good qualification. I'm definitely not promising people like fame and riches by like uh, blogging. Yeah, don't do that. And, 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 and I, th I think part of part of what what makes this whole thing interesting too is right that, that you know, like it, it's exactly as you said, right? You, 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 we're in a niche, you know. And I don't care about anything that's outside of this niche. You know, I want respect from this niche. I want prestige in that niche. You know, like I want, you know, a certain number of people to think that I'm a good writer. You know, mm -hmm. like I, that's all I care about, really. Like I really don't care about, you know, like popular approval, you know, and, and it, that, that would be absurd anyways, you know, because right. I'm not that not that type of writer, you know, who writes popular things, you know, like I'll always be, you know, like weird and, you know, like. Uh, niche you know in that way but you know i do care about these these things and and i think that's fantastic too you know because that's you know that's what's what culture is supposed to be you know right no definitely i completely agree I, w my comments here are mostly directed at because i get emails from these types of people like 20 people young people in their 20s who are really bookish and they've been reading theory or uh for quite some time and they're really passionate they have some interesting ideas that they want to develop and you know they're young aspiring intellectuals and I get a lot of emails from this type of person and it's come to occupy a, a, a kind of special place in my heart because I've been through all of this and I I succeeded. I mean, I did as well as anyone could hope to do by going through the institutional channels and did quite well for myself. And, and so I, I've kind of seen a lot of, of, these, of these processes. And now that I'm on the outside, I've also seen that. So I have quite a lot of kind of experiences and observations to draw on. And what I'm basically, all I'm really trying to communicate is that if you're a young aspiring intellectual in your 20s or even younger, you should be thinking like, I'm not saying you're going to get rich and famous by blogging or making YouTube content or something like that. But if what you want is to just produce meaningful intellectual work at length and you want it to be read or you want it to be heard and you want to have, you just want to make your little bit of cultural impact. You want to make a mark. You want to constitute some kind of meaningful public intellectual project. If that is all your goal is, and that's, I think, you know, pretty much the main goal for most 
uh, intellectuals, that's, that's roughly how most of us see it in one way or another, then do not waste your time writing proposals and waiting to hear back from these like very small presses, which as you said, Nicholas, are essentially just glorified self-publishing that really all it's going to do is make you anxious. It's going to make you write in a way that's trying to please someone else instead of doing what's unique to you. And it's going to make you waste a lot of time while you're, you know, anxiously fidgeting with your proposal or anxiously waiting to hear back from whether these like four random people approve of your fucking book or not. Like, don't waste that time. You can do it on the side if you want to. I'm not saying, you know, people can publish with, with, with uh norm normie publishers if they want to by all means it, it's fine to do if you if you choose to do it if it works for you all i'm saying is young people who see that as like the ticket they see that as the as as the gate they have to pass through or the the hoop that they have to jump through a lot of young people are under the impression that they have to do that to make it to be legitimated to make a splash to be noticed to be respected and that is simply false not only is it false but i would almost argue the opposite of true is true that if you spend your 20s trying to get fucking some small press like zero books or even verso books to publish you if that's what you're dedicating your effort and energy and creativity to that instrumental goal you're actually going to um create much less interesting stuff at a much lower volume that's actually going to have less of an effect on less people um than if you spent all of that time just thinking and writing and speaking directly the entire time uh, to the internet. I, I really do believe that, that that's the case now at, at this point in well, time. Well, I mean, you, you look, I mean, maybe on that, like, I, th I think it's so important people should learn how to write books, you know, like, I think that's a mm -hmm. different thing than, you know, like being a YouTuber, you know, like- But I, do editors think... of publishers actually teach you how to do that? My experience is no, you have to learn that on your own, whether you like yeah, it or yeah, not, yeah, no you matter have to, what you, you have to You have to learn that on, on your own, but I think, you know, it's important, you know, like as a civilization that we create books, you know, like even though- you oh, know, and that's, and that's weird, right? Because, you know, in a way, you know, like nobody reads this stuff, you know, like what, what, I, what I published wasn't a book, you know, it's an, it's, a, it's an essay, you know, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's a coffee table book and it was designed as an object, but in a way I, I still, you know, like my, you know, like I think the most important people, they know how to write books and, you know, like they, in my world, they have a different level of prestige than people who haven't published books. And I have to say that, you know, like I, you know, like, because that I know right. what kind of work that is to do, you know, like, and you know, that, that, that's also like, you know, respect people who, who, who actually know how to do this stuff, you know, that's, for sure, that's for insane sure. work, man. Like to, to, to write a book of two, 300 pages, even, you know, that's a lot of work and you get very, very little for it, you know, but you know, as a civilization, right. it's important that we do it. And, you know, like, that's also the problem, of course, with marketizing it all. Right. I mean, you know, like you, you, you actually, it would be good if we, you know, like, and I think that that's, that's where, where, you know, like, it comes in again we have to i think create a parallel culture that is again that is a bit more aristocratic you know that reads books you know that that is serious about intellectual culture you know like because that that doesn't exist anymore man like mm. that's that, that's it's fucking terrifying you know like if you look at you know go to a writer's festival it's it's a nightmare you know it's all personalized experiences of you know your certain i don't know like population niche you know you really feel like oh that's that's sort of that's not an intellectual discourse man that's just like you know, territorialized narcissism, you know, that's sort of cut up into these different, uh, you know, accounts of experience. But it does you know? exist. I mean, there are lots of highbrow readers who still read highbrow books. And there are interesting people who produce serious adult, you know, highbrow nonfiction. And the problem is that it's dis it's so dispersed and it's so kind of fragmented, even in the worlds of like weird radical political theory, like whether it be on the left or the right, you know, if you look at someone like uh, Moldbug or whatever, like mm -hmm. long, like long, you know, playful but erudite um, writings, like there is actually there are people reading that, and there and there are people talking about these things in private yeah. forums. Yeah, and, well, well, so well, just, somebody, yeah. somebody says Bronze Age uh, uh, pervert. Yeah, which is you know, like I mean, like 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 whatever you say about this that is the you know like that's the most contemporary thing somebody could produce possibly you know and that's a you know like whatever you say that's a really that, that's a really uh, talented guy who has an enormous enormous political and historical culture you know sure i think we could have an interesting debate about that but your point is definitely well taken and i mean in some sense it's also that's a good example um against your point of you know, the importance of books and these kind of traditional markers of 
of kind of highbrow intellectual life. I completely agree. Like we still have to write books and we still have to do serious, long form, difficult, you know, somewhat aristocratic works. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely game for that. And I'm, and I'm doing it like all a part of everything I'm doing right now, like the YouTube and the podcast and all, and, and my blog is really a kind of tactical system that is supporting and making possible the longer term work. So I have like multiple long form books that definitely will be coming out one way or another, whether it's by a traditional publisher or I just publish it myself, no doubt about it. But what I'm arguing is that just creating your own production and dissemination systems is increasingly the most promising way for any young intellectual to make their to make their mark to to achieve the kind of status and influence and distribution that they used to associate with publishers i just don't i just don't think it's i don't think the payoff is there anymore for for young aspiring intellectuals whereas if you take it into your own hands no one can stop you you're not waiting for anyone's approval and and the other benefit is you get to do it exactly how you want and that's most likely going to be um more powerfully effective on the unique slice of the you know erudite world that is interested in the in these types of things you're going to get your you're going to get your slice of it more rapidly and more in a way that's kind of more um correctly calibrated than if you had to kind of filter your book ideas through uh, a mainstream publisher that doesn't even really deliver you that many readers anymore oh, yeah yeah gotta, Okay, we got a question from someone in the audience. It's a, uh, we got a super chat on our hands. Could you tell us the details, Ben? All right, I read the question. Has Nicholas read and enjoyed any Australian authors since being uh, uh, down here? Uh, well, to, I, I have to admit, uh, uh, not, not enough. Not enough. Um, I think, you know, like, I, you know, I like, you know, for example, Picnic at Hanging Rock, J Joan Lindsay, but... Um, I I I like um, I, I heard uh, uh, Simon Simon Sellers is interesting. I haven't looked into his stuff. He's a Bellardian. You know, we 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 follow each other on on on, on Twitter. Um, yeah, so not enough. But I I welcome I welcome recommendations. And you know, like if anyone has a recommendation, I'm I'm really open for to it. You know, like Australia is a, is a is a is a fascinating and pleasant place, by the way. You know, Nicholas, like I, I really really like it. You have you ever met my friend Bradley Garrett by any chance? Uh, don't, don't, don't think so. Where? The reason I ask, well, there's two reasons. One, he writes, he writes books that are kind of edgy coffee table books. Also, he's a photographer and a geographer. Um, he actually wrote a couple books that did extremely well, like large glossy, uh, photograph books. Mm. Um, he, he like went with, uh, I forget what they're called, but the people who climb, buildings like on the side of the buildings like free free climbing on <laughs> on buildings he like went up with them uh at to, to like the tops of of buildings and took pictures with them and did like a cool kind of uh photo book about it that actually sold like crazy anyway the, the other re the reason i thought of him is because apart from the fact that he's a really cool dude i became quite close with him in england where he worked at, at the, my university for a little while but he moved to australia um, and, um, that's why I was just curious if your paths ever crossed because there aren't that many people who write edgy urban coffee table books and are go to Australia and move to Australia. So impossible niche uh, by any means, like, like in, in, introduce me to, you know, like I, you know, I'm always like interested in meeting people, you know, like, right on. I right also, on. I'll, you know, I, I, I really, I do, I, I do talk to everybody. Like I do, I do talk to people like from all sorts of backgrounds, you know? And then, yeah, definitely for sure. And so how did, how did your kind of issues with zero and Doug Lane pan out? Like, was that the end of it? That was all there was to it or what? No, I don't know. Like I'm, 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 you know, like writing, you know, like nasty provocations on, on Twitter every once in a while. But no, I mean, like, I, I, I think, you know, like, of course, he wants to keep this low, that that's unpleasant to sort of, you know, that's unpleasant to him in his position. And I, I can sort of understand that. But you know, like, I mean, yeah, really, well, who, cares, I, who cares about zero? I mean, like, do, I, I really think like, and you know, you know, <laughs> that that's not where interesting discourse is happening, right? No, no. For sure. It's not, that's you know, not where I mean, interesting discourse is happening. You know, like I, 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 I would always much rather write for a, a Jacobite, which I think is interesting. You know, like I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what people say. Like I'm also like I welcome sort of 
sort of recommendations by anyone who who has a good idea you know what other magazines are interesting you know like i you know i really you know i'm i'm really open to to you know i'm i'm not ideologically constrained you know i just like i, I want interesting discourses you know and definitely <clears throat> and so are you did you turn to jacobite because you do you have any type of kind of latent vaguely reactionary interests or no truly not at all uh yeah i don't i don't think reactionary is the is the right word i mean i love the reactionary writers of course you know like emil Sioran and you know like uh, jünger and uh, you know carl schmidt i mean i think all of these people are deemed reactionary but i don't know if reactionary is a good word because right it's like this idea that you sort of you go back to something you know like and i think yeah you know like this going back it's extremely important but it has to be sort of artificial and you know selective you know you take aspects from the past and you know i think that that's that's necessary for us even you know like as a as a as a civilization because we're we, i mean you, you can already see that we're completely fucked i mean no i'm 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 usually I, i'd say i'm a, i'm a geopolitical thinker and if you think in terms of geopolitics, you know, like a lot of questions just don't have to be asked, you know, because, you know, geopolitics has its own logic, you know, and if you neglect it, you know, it's like a, you know, an ontological Sturmabteilum, you know, it, it'll, 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 you know, like it'll kick out, it'll kick your legs away, you know, mm. and I think that's what, what's, what's happening, you know, like, because people, I think, <clears throat> you know, what, what, what happened in the West is that, uh, you know, sort of people have become so obsessed with territorializing populations, you know, I think, I think people will look back at, at this century as sort of, or at, at the 20th century as like a total demobilization. Hmm. You know, they, they're, they're sort of, you know, if you look at sort of this, you know, Adorno, the anti-fascist personality, all of this sort of legacy of thinkers, they, they're, they're just sort of destroying discipline in society and sort of demobilizing populations. And I think one of the big beefs of the West with places like, you know, China is that the Chinese never did this, you know, like the, 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 the Chinese are still like, the, you know, if you see their kids, you know, they're still LARPing as like, uh, you know, 19th century bourgeois, you know, like they're, they're learning the piano and they're extremely disciplined, you know, they've never given that up. And I think that's something really worth interesting. I think there was a faith in the West in technology that they thought, oh, technology is going to, you know, like just give us this advantage that's going to go on forever. And I don't think that that's playing out so well. And I think we're seeing that right now. I think we're seeing right now that there was a sort of miscalculation. And I think that whatever is happening in the West, which is, you know, like that's a, that's a struggle between, you know, factions of the government you know, to mm. sort of, to, to think about, okay, you know, we either have to abandon this like empire, which is all lowest common denominators, you know, and like building on, onto, you know, like, you know, just importing people to do the job for you and, you know, like to, to sort of change this model again. Mm. Do you have plans for another book? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm writing on a book on geopolitics. Yeah. What publisher writing... are you looking at now? Yeah, this is, that's a really good question. I have no idea. Like, I, I obviously I can't I can't publish with zero anymore. You know, they're, they're not. <laughs> you know, maybe I should ask. No, I'm sorry. You know, like, I wonder if I wonder if Jacobite will come out with like a book imprint. They should do that. I looked at that. that that's I think yeah. That, that's actually something you know that's really interesting. Like I'm I'm talking to uh, to 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 Rob Mariani. Um, I've been talking to him, you know, about something like this, but now he has a, you know, he has a full-time job and I think he's very busy and, you know, but he's a, he's an excellent guy. And I, I, I wonder, you know, if, if that's not something also, you know, like where, you know, like we, we should get together and, you know, like perhaps you're also interested in, in, in doing something. Right. Like that, it's know, interesting like you say that because just, just I'm... small, small essays, you know, like small format, well designed and so on, you know, like, right. At least to start. Yeah. Interested. And then who knows, sky's the limit. <laughs> I'm actually at the moment, I, I don't know if you would have caught word of this, but um, I'm writing and publishing a short book about Deleuze and that's going to be out on, uh, September 20th. And this is just basically one of many experiments that I'm doing right now. I'm doing a, a large number of small projects just to kind of see how mm -hmm. things work, see how many people are interested in things and see how much money things make. And just yeah, to get you, a sense you, of, you, you, of, you were impressively quick with that, I think, right? What's that? Why well, I was quick about that? Yeah, you, you, you were you, you were writing that book very fast, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a very short, it was by design, a short project. I said at the beginning, I would do, um, 
you know, just about uh, 20,000 words is what I said. And um, I mean, even like the academic publishers are moving towards like shorter and shorter things. If you look at like the University of Minnesota yeah. does, does this yeah. short series and like their minimum is uh, 20,000. So I kind of just saw that. I was like, okay, let's, let's work with this. So I basically just set some arbitrary parameters for myself. And I said, um, I'll put up a pre-order form. I'll do 20,000 words on this topic and uh, if people are interested in pre-order. And so I'm basically doing a bunch of little things like this to kind of gauge interest and make some, you know, informed data-driven uh, assessments about like what is realistic moving forward for the next few years. But anyway, so since I'm publishing this, I'm going to self-publish this first short little book. But once you do it once, once you go through the process and you kind of learn, I'm learning right now how it works. It's actually ridiculously easy and simple to, to self-publish books, even print uh, on Amazon. And, but once I do it once, there's really no reason I couldn't and shouldn't just uh, publish books by some of my colleagues and friends and just interesting people I know who uh, perhaps can't find a publisher elsewhere, especially mm -hmm. given that right now, there's probably a serious market opportunity because of political correctness and people are afraid to publish stuff that's good, but, but edgy. So yeah, I kind of, I've recently been, I've recently been trying. I think that's interesting. And, and I think, as I said, you know, I think that the essay is a good format in the end, even if it's like 120 pages or something, mm -hmm. you know, and, but it's long, that's still long enough, you know, like if you, you know, I remember in Germany, they have this like very, they have a popular publisher called Merve, you know, M E R V E. And they sort of, they produce these small books that everybody carries in their pockets. You know, right. and, you know, sort of a small, but they're also, you know, they're an object in a way, you know, it's a status symbol, you know, I mean, of course, but they, um, they, they are the people who translated, you know, accelerationist stuff into German, for example. Yeah. You know? oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I think I've heard of them. So, um, um, yeah. You know, and, 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 and they have a name and I think, I think it's important, you know, it's important sort of for culture to, to, to have a thing like this, you know, even though I think, for example, like the, the stuff that's printed on Amazon, it doesn't look so nice, you know, like, you know, yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that. that's like, uh, don't know, you know, like I, you know, I, 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 st yeah. I still think, you know, people like, like, like Bronze Age uh, pervert, that, that should be in a, you know, that book should, should be in a different form, you know, but it's a, right. you know, but the thing is, the thing is, when the time comes for that, that's not that hard to do next, right? Like you can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can bootstrap these things in an iterated way. So, um, you know, the, he, Bronze Age Pervert could very well do that. I could still do that later. Um, but yeah, and no, I have actually been thinking more about this. That uh, because once you pop, once you self-publish one book, when you go through the whole process of writing it, drafting it, editing, and doing the kind of there's some weird and arcane kind of systems you have to create to be able to uh, produce like the various types of eBooks that, that you need to produce for different standards or whatever. But once you do it once, once you do all of this one time, it's easy to automate. So I've pretty much done like a lot of this work. It, if someone wanted, if I wanted to publish a book for someone else under like my imprint or whatever, like the difference between self-publishing and just starting a little publishing house is virtually, it's virtually indistinguishable. You know, I think mm -hmm. we're moving. And, and if you look at something like zero books, how like zero books is kind of, uh, gradually becoming like the content creator scheme of Doug Lane. I think what we're seeing is a kind of convergence. Like, <laughs> a, we're, seeing a con, a con, we're seeing convergence across the board oh, such that over the next few years, the difference between a content creator and a publishing house is going to be increasingly indistinguishable and flimsy. And so, yeah, people should just get after it now and just fast forward to where we're going, make an imprint with your buddies and just get to work and start posting. And the more people do that, I mean, the more the more this kind of really small scale, radical yeah. kind of digital first publishing, but, but, but also I, I, you know, the easier it becomes for other people also to do it. So there's network effects I, here. Also. Yeah, I, I think it's also good to sort of uh, to actually go move back to print a bit, you know, because I, I I'm really sure. like the, the way I'm, you know, I'm, it's it's quite interesting to also to see it from uh, you know observing Australia, for example, uh, 4chan is blocked here, and mm. uh, BitChute is blocked here. So, uh, you know, there, I think there is this possibility that, you know, that people try to shut down the internet. So I think it's important, you know, to also sort of, you know, collect books, you know, collect physical objects and so on. Oh, for sure. I for that, sure. But the, I think the thing I, I'm with I, that, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm being too pessimistic on that, but it's just, yeah. you know, like, you know, it's, it's, I, I've seen a sort of I've seen this as a cultural movement and I, I know sort of people who work in, in, in digital politics and they share the concern. So you know, you know, to, to take that to mean whatever it means. I think it's important, you know, to learn how to read in between the lines. It, it's important to sort of write in between the lines. It's it's important to sort of, you know, produce books and physical objects and, you know, like not have it all perhaps online. 
Oh, it's also I a nice it. culture yeah. to sort of, you know, like as a Nemo technique, you know, to read a whole book, you know, like a lot of people, they can't do that. You know, they're actually incapable of reading books now. You know, that's no joke. Sure. No, I don't. I totally get that. And I completely agree. With learn you how to that. read that, you know, like yeah. learn how to read books again. If you can't read a book, you know, like learn how to read it again, like punish yourself and, and, and learn it. You know, it's important. Yeah. No, really, I think it's. No, I, I hear that. I, attention spans definitely have been decimated. I think that's a real phenomenon, no doubt. And I agree with you on the importance of of kind of physical products for the production of culture, no doubt. I just think that a digital first strategy is what makes the most sense be, simply because the amount of stuff that you can produce on the internet and kind of the, yeah, no, the, imme the immediacy of it, like the turnaround time, is so it's all just so much you, 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 uh, you, you can't free. actually you, you you can't not be on the internet you know if you if you want to sort of if you're no if you're a nobody and you want to you know you want to be some i think uh, it's, it's very unlikely that you are and it's also good you know like as you said you know if you want to negotiate with a publisher it's always good if you already have an audience yeah of course of course you know like or just build an build an audience that's big enough that you don't even want the publisher anymore. I mean, there, yeah, there's exactly. more there's more and more examples of this. I mean, you're seeing it. It's still relatively rare, but yeah. in the fiction in the fiction publishing world, for instance, which I've been paying a lot of attention to lately, um, because I think there's just so much more of a market for fiction that it's kind of like the the future of publishing will arrive to us through. Uh, fiction, I, I think. And if you look at fiction, I mean, self-publishing is way more common. And uh, I don't think that self-publishing has really like, cr like, it hasn't really quite cracked into the adult highbrow nonfiction. But like, I'm doing it with, with my buddy also, Jeffrey Miller, who, who I'm currently living with. Um, we're, we're doing some of these experiments together. I, I, I think that um, the way the market pressures are going, it's, it's, it's a pretty safe bet that sooner or later, even kind of adult serious nonfiction is going to get cracked by a significant um, arrival, if you will, of of just the normalcy of self-publishing. Like it's not normal yet. It's still seen as a little like weird, you know, but, uh, lower status. But in the in the fiction world, um, self-publishing is actually it can be higher status in the sense that a lot of fiction authors start off by being successful via self-publishing and that's how they get the big book deals like a lot of the the big fiction book deals mm -hmm. from the big from the big publishers they they find their authors from the self-publishing world uh it's more and more like that in in fiction that seems to be increasing over time in, fi in the fiction world i think it's hard to imagine why it wouldn't also happen to nonfiction. uh i think it's just slower because it's more based on social status and it's a higher class people right so they're kind of slower to update their 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 priors but I think once a few people do it, like once serious adult nonfiction gets cracked with some successful self-publishing, you know, experiments, I think um, from there, it'll probably become much more common. At least that's the wager that I'm making. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I absolutely agree. I still think, you know, it's interesting to, you know, like I like actually publishing as a sort of collective, you know, like I really, mm. for example, like I, I really think Jacobite is excellent, you know, of, you know, of course. I mean, I, I'm I'm proud to to be able to publish with Nick Land, you know, who's who's one of the you know who's one of the gods, you know, like really like look at the essays. Like, if you really want to see someone like create a beautiful beautiful writing, you know, that's that's dense and deep, you know, like I mean, th th there's few people who can who can do that, and and really like I, I encourage, and I like that what 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 Rob Mariani does, sort of his his curating the content. I think it's it's all very good, and I. I like this idea of you, you know, publishing as a collective too, and not just sort of as an individual. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but I, I just, you know, I, I think that's interesting to sort of, you know, like if you because if your sort of intellectual culture is it always has to be a sort of conversation too, right? For sure. Like you're, you're you're discussing things with other people that are interesting, and you know, like and, and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of characters out on Twitter, you know, like mm -hmm. like uh, 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 you know, Mike Crumpler and and yeah, yeah, you say what you want, but you know, like he knows yeah. how to provoke and so on. You know, oh, I, I got nothing against him. Yeah. And, and, he, and he's a, he's a good writer. You know, like you 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 may not agree with, um, you know, sort of what he has to say, but uh, you know, I I I, I think I still think he has talent. You know, not everybody has talent. Sure. You know, yeah. and and there's a lot of really talented people like Jacob Phillips, for example, is one of my favorite writers. Essay. Oh yeah, I know. I hung out great. with him a few times in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
somebody asked in the in the in the in the questions about about Jason Horsley, you know, who's who I think is an interesting outsider artist, you know, like who, you know, I've I've, I've reviewed his book for the Hong Kong Review of Books, which also almost never got published because you know there was a there was a controversy about this going on whether he's transphobic or something you know and somebody asked if he's an anti-semite and he's not you know like I, I, I don't think these things interest him at all you know like he's a sort of guy who writes about psychedelics and uh you know quite interesting stuff sort of the way um culture is engineered or has been engineered or sort of influenced by you know stuff like mk ultra and stuff so it's the stuff that that has become sort of popular knowledge now and has netflix series about it and so on right which used to be this entirely completely obscure stuff that nobody knew about right but mm. i think that's just that's just really interesting that this sort of you know like the the this, this sort of nasty undercurrent of culture again you know coming to the right. fore right and um yeah i don't know who else i should mention yeah yeah, yeah a lot, lot, lot of interesting a lot of interesting people out there like really who who, who are off talent you know Oh yeah, I mean that, but that's what I'm saying exactly. I'm I'm all for collective projects for sure, and I mean even like the individual stuff that I'm doing is it's intrinsically. I mean all this stuff is always intrinsically uh, coming from a kind of community level, whether what you know whether you like it or not. It's just kind of how intellectual work is produced in, in cultures. So I'm I'm definitely with all of that. I guess if my comments sound somewhat individualistic, the reason for that is because. I hear from a lot of people, people write me messages and emails and stuff like that. And my, a lot of my comments are kind of geared for the kind of isolated young person who, who's kind of like afraid that they're not going to be accepted. You know, they're, they're like, there's so much anxiety out there from individuals who they want to be legitimated. They want that. They want to be let into the cool kids club. And yeah, yeah. Well, there, well, Fair that's enough. Very I, mean, impressive. I, I think that's, it's also that's a very oppressive mindset. In, in in that regard, it's also it's it's important that you know, like if you're a sort of if you're a halfway established guy, like you know, like give shout outs to people who are interesting, you know, oh, like, yeah. and Definitely. you know, like and be open to sort of talk. Like I'm 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 really like, you know, like if you you know you know if you're an interesting person you know like and you you write well you know like i'll have an open ear for you you know and i don't know like i mean i don't have a lot of twitter followers but you know i think it's important and i think that's the also the idea of a collective you know that you you can integrate people you can give people a chance who you think are interesting but you know like maybe they're not so good at promoting themselves or whatever you know so hell yeah hell yeah definitely you definitely. Know? And I think also think like the more that people do it, the more it becomes p easier for other people to do it. Um, th this type of like radical outside project, um, whether it be self-publishing or, you know, disintermediated culture like YouTube or whatever the case might be, you know, there is still this kind of like status issue where it is kind of seen as like lowbrow or like, why are you not a professional academic if you're so smart, Th that kind of thing. But I, I think, um, the yeah, more... but, but I mean, yeah, is that still the case? I mean, I don't think exactly. That's still... I don't think young so. people, you know, like if you're an academic, you're almost outside of it. But but I also think, you know, like you, we shouldn't like carelessly abandon these institutions. You know, like mm -hmm. to build a parallel culture is not to sort of be completely outside of culture. You know, it's to to remain open, sort of to to a conversation with it. You know, because if not, you're 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 shutting yourself out. You know, like you're. You, you know, like you're, you're, you're condemning condemning yourself to permanent opposition, and I think it's important not to do that. I want to I want a parallel culture, you know, just to see, you know, that that whenever you know these like subsidized authors, you know, just like these ideology authors, you know, who get these all of these writing gigs and you know like who get scholarships and so on. I just want you know that for any sane person to, if they see the discrepancy between those two things. You know, like I want them to know what's the good thing, what's the real culture. And I also want, you know, like the, these, these subsidized authors themselves, I want them to be ashamed, you know, like I want them to look at these essays and think, oh my God, that's so outside, you know, like we, you know, like that's nothing. What I wrote, my personal account of this or that is just shit, you know, like I, I want it to be that devastating and we still have a lot of work to do, you know, but, you know, I think, you know, learn how to sort of, I'd love for people to, you know, like to look at, you know, the, because there are really good essayists outside. And again, like, you know, like I'm not trying to suck up, but look at Nick Land, like that's to, to write an essay like that, that takes decades. 
you know i I really think that you know like if if you you know want to become a good rider you know like you really have to that's you know like you know but that's something to you know not, not everybody can do that and if you think you can do that or if you think you can write you know like uh, bronze age mindset or something you, you, no you know like that takes a lot of time you know like you know, i still like, think bronze age uh mindset is a psyop uh, why, why is that what do you, what I mean, do you mean i don't know psyop? exactly yeah, of i don't course, know by exactly. definition it is right no, by no definition, I, I, it's a psyop sorry i didn't catch what you said by definition it's a psyop oh nice true uh no, I just mean, I just mean, I think there's more, I think there's more than meets the eye there. I think I've, I've had this kind of conspiracy theory about Bronze Age pervert, which I've articulated before. I won't, I won't uh, beat a dead horse, but I, he's a good example of something definitely interesting. Definitely. You know, I'm not, I'm not taking any way, anything away from the project, but um, I do think there's something, something going on beneath, behind the scenes where multiple people, some of whom have, uh, more established perches in kind of institutionalized corridors of power are kind of cooperating to make the Bronze Age pervert phenomenon successful. So I think it gives an, the, the, the project tries to give an impression of this kind of radically outside, uh, obscure, eccentric genius no, who no, kind no, of no. like rises to notoriety and attention. Well, and I think well, it's well, actually quite more of a plot than that. Well, you know, like I, I think, you know, like whoever does that, you know, I think I know, I know who it is, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. But I think, you know, if you you look at the sort of culture behind that, you know, there's only, there's only so many people that come in into question, you know, like to sort of, you know, to have like to to, you know, talk about classical culture, to be a Nietzschean, you know, to to write about obscure, uh, or, you know, Russian books that sort of, uh, what's what's the name of this guy? Uh, who sort of said that actually, you know, like a couple of centuries didn't exist, that the Renaissance was actually antiquity. It's a Russian author. Anyway, it's mentioned in this book. And, um, you know, but yeah, I, I think he, you know, he's part of a network, you know, like, and, 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 and he's, a, he's a writer. I think he's a lesser known writer, you know, like who, who published before. And I, I know, I, I think, you know, of course he has a lot of friends, you know, and a lot of sympathizers, but I, I don't think that means it's like that, that it comes from somewhere you know, above or something. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. I could be wrong, you know, but yeah, I, I have I no idea. That. either. I just like kind of somebody, somebody said, you know, like it, it's Peter Thiel, you know, I thought, no, that's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> no. That, 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 you know, Peter Thiel wouldn't ask, you know, for you, for you to finance his podcast. You know, I don't think that would happen. <laughs> right. Have you listened but, to the, pod the Bronze Age Pervert podcast? Yeah, I've, I've listened to it. Yeah. Is it cool? I haven't. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Look, I mean, as, as I said, you know, I think he's a he, he, this this uh, this guy who, if you know, I think he's a really interesting writer, and you know, like I think he he may he may have a, a problem with you know keeping up this persona because this persona is like a you know it's a it's an you know he's an artist you know like and he's creating this you know art form and you know like that you know like and th there's all of these people now who probably you know like have no real idea of what that actually is. But, you know, like it's become this weird political movement. And, you know, like I, I think really that, you know, if you have that many followers and uh, you sort of, you know, you, you come under a lot of pressure, like especially if you, you, you do stuff like, you know, like if you talk about stuff the way, you know, it talks about stuff. So it, that's not nothing, you know, like I think, mm -hmm. you know. I'm in a comfortable position, you know, if, 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 if nobody knows you, it's, it's a comfortable position. Can I ask what you do for a living? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I work uh, private sector jobs. Sure. Yeah, I, I'd like to I'd like to leave it at that. So. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I work uh, two jobs. So and and the reason is also to to be less dependent on one. I think that gives one more sort of negotiating power. And yeah, uh, sure. yeah you know, yeah, but but you know, I'm I'm a regular guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a hobby writer. You know, like you know, I'm not I'm not you know. No, I'm not trying to be a, an internet personality. Well, one could argue that being a hobby writer is one of the healthiest ways to be a writer. You know, it's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because you don't you don't have the pressure. You don't want that pressure. You don't, you know, like, 
I, and it, sort of, I can say that, you know, having written for Vice magazine at the time in, in, in Berlin, and it's, you know, it's just such a, and, and, and even there, but I wasn't dependent on the job, but I could see how unpleasant that would be, you know, if you're in there and then, you know, you, you get all these demands laid on you and, you know, you have to sort of betray your, you know, like yourself entirely in order to, to, to be a part of that or something like, don't do that. You know, I don't think it's worth it. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. So what's next for you in terms of intellectually? Is it the, the next book project you want to write or do you have any other interesting projects on the, on the radar? Um, yeah, yeah, I probably continue to, to, to write essays on the side and, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a book, but I, I really find that, you know, I, I really find that incredible if you, you know, that the way you can finish a book in like two or three months, like I, I really like, wow. not, I, like honestly, honestly impressive, you know, like not everybody can do that. Well, it's only a short book of 20,000 words. So, I mean, it's yeah, like but still, you know, like you, there, there's a lot of you, you, there's, you know, that that's another thing, you know, like you, you're a trained academic, you know, so you know how to write lots. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, uh, like, yeah, it's it's not nothing. It's not that easy, you know, like to sort of, you know, write that that much and sort of get to the point and so on. So it helps sort of to that's something being an academic, I guess, helps. Yes. But you know what else I, yeah. I, I would also say that I, I want to share with people because it's been quite revealing to me. The experience of writing a book when you know that you're going to publish it yourself is a very different experience. And at least for me, so I've written I've, I've pretty much, I, before this, I wrote two, I've written pretty much the lion's share of two books. Um, there's the book, the theory book that I wrote when I was quite young uh, in kind of grad school and first years of academia being an academic. I wrote a book, that was the book that I pitched to Zero Books, which uh, was rejected. Uh, but I, I basically wrote pretty much the whole thing before I submitted it. So that's just been sitting on my shelf. And then I also wrote a, <clears throat> over the past year, I wrote a really polished professional proposal for a book and I got an agent in New York and he's been shopping that around. He hasn't had any luck, but the point that I mentioned, the, the point for mentioning this is just to say, I have pretty much two experiences writing, writing good chunks of books for the second book. I wrote like uh, two whole chapters, which isn't most of it, but uh, it was like a really, really detailed, uh, sophisticated proposal and two chapters I wrote. And the reason I mentioned this, these past experiences is just to say that it's way more anxious and taxing to write a book. If you know that you're going to have to try to pitch it to other people. Um, it really is hard to, it's hard to state how, how, how noticeable and significant the difference is because when you're sitting down to write a book that, you know, it's going to have to pass through a different, you, you know, that it's going to have to pass through a few filters, whether it be an agent or a publisher or whatever, just knowing that, it's going to have to jump through that hoop makes it like a more cognitively and emotionally taxing and anxious and just kind of heavy, sweaty, morbid type of process. It makes it more morbid. Of course, hopefully it's not, not altogether morbid, but that all of that concern, that future expectation really layers on this like thick layer of morbidity in my experience anyway, and makes it harder, makes it more time consuming, makes it less fun, makes it more stressful and anxious. What really struck me about writing this short uh, Deleuze book is it felt so much more fun and it was so much more freeing and, and just, it was exciting. It was fun. I was amped to get it done quickly. I knew I, you know, I had nothing in my way. It was just a, a feeling to use the Deleuzean term of smooth space. It was just absolute smooth space because no one was going to stop me. It wasn't conditional on anything. It didn't have to jump through any hoops. It just had to have a beginning, a middle, an end. It had to have good spelling, good grammar, and it had to contain ideas that I truly believe in a way that I think is compelling and artful and, and effective. But, and, and when that's all you're doing and you're not doing any of the social calculations about is this going to get through the different filters, I have to admit, dude, I, and I want to tell people, glee, I want to report to the world gleefully, it's so much more fun and it's so much easier. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to bang it out in a month. So that's just an interesting insight. I, I haven't really been able to share that with anyone yet. So I'm, I'm glad an opportunity came up to put that. Put yeah, that up. yeah, all right, all right. Hey, do, do you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, all right. I don't know if any anybody like I, I, th I think you know like I, you know if anybody has any questions, you know, we feel free to ask them now. But uh, you know, yes, we won't we won't keep you unnecessarily. Justin? 
long. Uh, are there any interesting questions, Ben? Ben's looking at the computer, not me. <laughs> yeah, Vice is dis disgraceful. I saw that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, What's disgraceful? Vice is disgrace. Writing for R Vice is disgraceful. Somebody said, and I said, well, it is I interesting agree. how these like formerly kind of edgy outlets have all been domesticated. I mean, there's a kind of parallel between yeah. Vice. And Look, I, all, I, all I can say is I got asked for it. You know, like it was good. It was good pay, and you know, like I, I try to, you know, like I wrote about propaganda and stuff, and and you know, like Syrian rebels, you know, like consuming Captagon, and you know, I try to try to make it interesting, but you know, it's only as far as it gets. You know. It, it's just a complete, you know, like it's just complete shit. Ben, any interesting questions or just people bullshitting? People bullshitting. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, we, all right. Okay. Well, we can give people just a minute. If anyone wants to get in a good, meaningful, substantive question, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I will start to wrap this up. And uh, Nicholas, I wanted to uh, thank you again. And I also wanted to say, I'm a fan of your writing. I'm a fan of your essays on Jacobite, and uh, I appreciate what you're doing. And also, I wanted to I wanted to tell you that um, I, I admire that when when Doug Lane threw you under the bus, I'm, I'm I admire that you you didn't just kind of sliver back into your you know private quarters and you kind of called him out and you 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 were willing to put yourself out there and provoke a little bit at least not to be like you know totally cucked by zero books. I appreciate that about that you did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, I guess we, we, you know, we have to. Yeah, I, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, it's interesting actually because you know, like, you know, you know these things. You know, like, you, you're being on Twitter is like writing your own criminal record, right? Like the same as doing interviews here. You know, it's like you know somebody's going to find something in there and you know is going to call you out for it. But mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, we want sort of culture to be, you know, to be. <clears throat> Yeah, you 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 don't want to like have to double think everything you want to say, and so we all we all have to sort of you know actively work on sort of making that. You know, in in German there's this word. It's called salonfähig. That means you know you can you, you know you can discuss a thing in in society, and I think that's it's important. You know that you, that we can keep talking about things. You know, in a civil way. You know, because everything seems to be working against that right now. And Definitely. you know, like we 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 shouldn't we shouldn't let that happen. Yes, Spandrel is a, is a is a great blogger. I agree. I think he's hilarious. I don't know. You know, I think he might be German too. You know, has this German abrasiveness to him. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, do you know Spandrel, Justin? What do you think? Yeah, of I've him? interacted with him a few times. He's accused. He's, he, he, of, like, he's accused. He's cruel. Of, yeah, he's, a, he's a cruel guy. He's. I think he's borderline psychopathic too. Uh, yeah. 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 He's. Um. He's always accusing me. He's accused me a few times of stealing his ideas. He has this idea. He has this idea of bio Leninism, which is his like trademarked concept. You know, he like yeah, well, I, well, he stole I, that from Nietzsche, though, didn't he? You know, like well, that's I, I, so what, happened, what, what happened. What happened? But was, it's funny. Like it's a really funny post. I really laughed hard reading that. You know, I think he's a you know. I think he's a smart, interesting dude. By all means, I, I'm not knocking him at all. All I know is that I first heard about him when he or one of his cronies kind of like tweeted at me or sent me a message saying like, "You're essentially." It's just saying bio Leninism, dude. And I eventually like read it and I was like, okay, it's an interesting idea. I get what you're saying. And, you know, uh, to the degree that I've said things that overlap with it, it's probably just because maybe we're both uh, onto something that's true. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Like, yeah, I think that, that, that's an interesting point because I think people need to understand, like, first of all, like we're swimming in the same zeitgeist. So, you know, like the same dialectic is coming up. We're watching the same things. We're roughly consuming the same content. So we're going to produce similar ideas. And maybe, you know, certain ideas want to be born and they, they, they're they recycled. Like everybody, you know, it's somebody, you know, I always I have people come to me, but yeah, that's just like, like obscure book from there and i discover it it's like oh yeah you're also helping me discover other culture like i you know that i don't necessarily know before like the more you write you know you'll you'll realize that you know people you'll you'll become interested in different people and different ideas you know and so this stuff of course yeah it gets repeated everything has already been said you know but you know like it's 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 about doing it sort of in a in a contemporary way you know like we you know, that's it. And I, I know this accusation, and a lot of times, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like, people, you know, like, the, you know, the, the, your ideas are not that unique, usually. Right. I think it's also a, this is a problem with people who are outside of academia. Like, I've had the benefit of going through academic legitimation. So I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I think a lot of people who 
are really smart and and are interesting writers who who write good, valuable, interesting stuff. A lot of them on the internet have a massive chip on their shoulder where they feel like they're uh, beleaguered or you know that th they feel like they didn't get their shot at like a professorship or whatever. And it's like there's a lot of I think kind of built up uh, sort of resentment, I guess ultimately, which yeah, but the, the resentment is mutual, right? You know, and and it's also you know like we're just a, you know that's a it's a resentful culture, and it's it's not healthy, you know. Like we're at the end of the day, you know, we're 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 roughly like working on the same thing, you know, and it's also like you know don't be so fucking abrasive you know like if you want to be if you want to be a reactionary like like roughly respect the hierarchies you know like and you know like look at you know other people are doing interesting stuff and, and credit them for you know it's also like some people you know they're, they're just nobodies and they're just trying to tear you down you know and it's like what is that man like you right, know you're exactly. not even boxing yeah. in the same ring man like you can't Dude. just be a nobody and just or you know like if you've never written an essay and you shit on other essays no like look at the essays and look at what's good and what's bad in them and you, you know if there's something bad in them you know by all means like criticize it but do so in a literate way you know like say why and you know like organize a thought you know organize yourself logically or else you know it's just you know it's just becoming disgusting you know dude i'm i completely agree and honestly one of the things that's been most surprising and kind of upsetting about everything that i've been experimenting with over, over the past year or two is that i thought when i really decided to start doing this stuff seriously and i'm like okay you know i'm I'm, let's let's just build a little platform and community type of thing where you know I'll put a lot of work into building it up and, and making interesting stuff that people like and and will subscribe to. But then when if I if I'm able to do that successfully at all, then it'll be really cool because then there are all these other interesting smart people scattered around the internet who no one knows about, and maybe my project can have a small role in in giving those people a more voice than they would have otherwise had like you know I, I don't think i'm some some kind of savior or anything like that but that was part of the motivation for all the stuff that i'm doing and one of the saddest things has been learning that like as my project becomes more successful and as actually my platform grows and i'm getting more excited about like oh cool now i can like bring more interesting people in who are maybe not as like well known as me but i can i can i can share this i can like do cool stuff with other people and and try to give like whatever little bit of influence or cultural capital or whatever i have with this this whole project or system that i built what i found is quite the contrary so many people actually just want to hate me and want to just shit on everything that i'm doing whereas yeah, i'm like, exactly yeah but, but like, you know, like fair enough you you're going through that and people should credit you for for i think you're a you're a courageous guy and i think you know like not everybody is and and, and that's a good thing but I, I i want to i want to say something else um you know yeah also like people like i hope people don't think they're anonymous when they're on twitter and just you know, like using some avatar or something. And they're also not anonymous if they're bloggers. You know, you have to be really, really good to be anonymous. I just want to remind people of that, you know, like, so, you know, like th th this sort of, the you know, like being anonymous online has its place. Absolutely. I think, you know, like ideas need to be born that way sometimes, you know, because they can't be spelled out by people with a name, but in the end, like learn how to sort of like think of what would happen if somebody exposes you. Because I think a lot of people, you know, they they do all this shit, but you know, like if you get important, you know, you're gonna, you know, people know, will know who you are and somebody always knows who you are. You know, they, it's a very selective invisibility that you have on the internet, you know, like, and you know, it only goes a certain way. So be prepared to lose your anonymity and, you know, don't think you're, you're an absolutely like, I think st people still, they're, they're, they don't know, they're not literate with, you know, like sort of info security, you know, like right, right. It, it's, it's really, really important to be, you know, Tor doesn't do it, you know, like. That's a good point. Yeah. And I think what I, mean, I would it, for, for most purposes, Tor does, but, you know, not, you know, like don't, you know, it doesn't make you an invisible dis dissident. That's, that's rubbish, you know, like. Right. At no. least if you're meaningful, if you're like some, okay, new Twitter account, six followers, or, okay, you know, maybe nobody's going to care about you anyways, but, you know, fair enough. And, you know, I, 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 I'm not trying, saying that to dis anonymity because I really think it's important. And I, I don't think, I don't know where we would be if people hadn't communicated like this, you know, and with their sort of pen names and so on. And I think it's important, but, you know, don't right. think, 
you know, you can do anything and it makes you invisible or anything. Yeah, that's a good bit of advice. And I think what, what I'm, what I would add to it is, I guess what I'm kind of trying to say to people is that if you're like an aspiring intellectual of any kind, and you're, let's say you're just like a random avatar on Twitter with like 400 followers, but you're smart and you read a lot and you want to write and you, and you have aspirations to do some kind of intellectual project. Like I beg you to resist the urges toward resentment. And like, instead of like going and writing some tweet about how like Justin Murphy sucks, like dude, write a fucking blog post. That's at all interesting and email it to me, man. I will support you. Like I want to, I want to encourage and support and like, you know, redistribute if you will, like whatever little bit of platform I, I've been able to build or will be able to build. Like everything I'm doing is truly pretty. It, it's, it's truly invested in a kind of radical counterculture. That's like what I've always been really interested in my whole life, you know, shows that that's pretty much like what I've been constantly repeatedly dedicated to is trying to build and foster a kind of like revolutionary militant kind of intellectual counterculture. And so, yeah, it's just like, I don't get hurt personally. Like I don't give a shit if some avatar on Twitter is like saying Justin Murphy sucks. I could care less, but it, more, what I'm saying is that it's sad. Like if yeah, yeah. And then, then, then people should also, people should also understand, you know, we're, we're, we're middle-aged men, you know, we, you know, and, and, and you have certain obligations. So like read in between the damn lines, you know, like, and, 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 you know, don't think we're, we're some, you know, like marginal fucking 18 year olds who's sitting, you know, like who has nothing to lose and so on, because it's always, that's a very easy and comfortable position, you know, like part of what we do is we, you know, it's not a pleasant thing to go out with your name and, and argue for something that is not a popular idea. It doesn't help you, you know, like right. professionally, it doesn't help you at all. Really. Like it's, it's a thing that you, it's a concession you can make, you, you choose to make it, you know, because you think ah, I hate this culture. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to live in fucking, you know, uh, you know, Soviet Bulgaria, like, so mm -hmm. let's uh, like keep it as open as possible. And that means we all have to make, you know, a little bit of a concession, but like understand that, you know, like we're, we're grown up men, you know, we have to make a living and so on. We can't just like completely go nuts and go crazy. And even people who do it, you know, like they sort of, you know, that may work for you for, for, for two years or even for five years. And after that, it looks entirely different. You know, like if you have a, uh, if you have a girlfriend, who wants to have a kid with you you know like that that's going to be pressure on you and so on like uh, like people should understand that you know like understand that people are you know like they are under you know like everybody is living in the society and so like but but learn how to negotiate it like i, I really i want to make this point like learn how to negotiate these things but you know yeah yeah definitely i just wish that collaboration and cooperation came as instinctually easy to people as resentment uh because yeah I, well i mean i did, did you know that's that's also perhaps you know like we are we're, we're sitting too much on desks and so on you know like that's that's perhaps you know even physiologically that's a you know that i, I see problems coming onto this society you know like the, the, you know the, the the kids look weak you know like let me just say that and maybe that's why people adore bodybuilders and so on you know like you know, I think, I think there's a, there's a problem. And, and by any means, you know, if you say, you know, Justin Murphy sucks, you know, that's funny, but you know, like as, as long as you don't like do it, like as real genuine resentment and, you know, like sit at home, like, you know, if you're resentful like this, you, you really have a problem, man. Like, you know, like find out what it is, you know, yeah, it's your sure. lifestyle, although, you know? Right. For sure. Although the way I think about it is like, I'm so small and insignificant that if you're like wasting the three seconds of energy to even say Justin Murphy sucks, you're, you're kind of a loser. I mean, like who, like, like I'm such a, I'm such a kind of a meager target. Uh, to, so yeah, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I've been very, I've been very disillusioned, I guess, to some degree, because I kind of thought that um, the more this weird kind of adventure I'm on, the, the more it grows and establishes some kind of presence and influence. I would, I kind of imagine that all of the kind of uh, smaller, lesser known kind of eccentric intellectual people around the internet would be like, oh, this is really cool. This is like, I'm kind of connected to this. I can email Justin and I can go on the live stream or like I can write a blog post. And this, there's this brewing culture of people that are interested in weird eccentric internet stuff. Like I, I just honestly assumed people would 
would think it's cool and would be happy to be a part of it and would want to contribute and collaborate. And all, I imagine like all different types of new projects would kind of spin off and people would create different collaborations and that's how a culture emerges. That's what a counterculture is. Um, and so it's just very, it's always very sad to see like when people choose resentment over. Yeah, no, look, 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 yeah, I, ideally, but you know, I also, yeah, it, it's, it's a, uh, you know, like it's, you know, that there are difficult times, you know, and, 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 and yeah. people are extremely like, I, I really, I really see that, like, especially young people, they, 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 a lot of people are very demoralized. Definitely. They're very demoralized and, you know, like, and, and, and that's interesting in itself, right? Because in a way, you know, like war in, in this day and age, you know, like everything's become so extremely civil, right? That, you know, like all, all of the battles are spiritual now, you know, but there's a real war going on and it's a spiritual war, right? Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, if you're not aware of that, you know, you, 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 maybe you choose not to fight it or something. But I think that it is a thing that's happening, you know, like, and yeah, I mean, fuck, it's, it's difficult. And like, I, I'm glad I'm not, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in, you know, that young, you know, I think it's, it's terrifying, you know, mm -hmm. people have a lot more freedom, a lot less freedom than, than, than I used to have, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much for your time. This was interesting. It was really nice to meet you. And this was an interesting uh, conversation filled with very edifying, you know, and stimulating insights and hypotheses. Uh, so thanks for sharing this time with me. All right, man. Thanks for your work. Thank you, man. Thank you for your work. And I'll be in touch with you. Let me know if you yeah, stay yeah. in touch. Cool. See ya. Yeah. See ya, man.